Hallelujah. 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 God is good all the time. Let us be seated, please. I'm so happy to be here this morning. Like I always say, anybody here this morning is not by accident. It has been destined that you are going to be here. And you have to be appreciative of God. That from January up to this time, you are still alive. We are still going to stand, stand up one more time. But before we stand up, I want to appreciate um, the shepherd for giving me the opportunity to stand in front of the congregation to talk about the word of God. Let us rise up, please. If you read the Bible, it said, Hallelujah broke down the walls of Jericho. I don't know what you are going through this morning, but the word of God says, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Yes, so we are going to chant 21 Hallelujah. Are we ready? Yes. Are you sure you are ready? Yes. If anybody is trying to disturb you, just let that person to step aside so you can be able to chant your Hallelujah. So I want them to hear, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all the way from Smyrna. So can you, can you chant that hallelujah they can hear in Smyrna? Let's go. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let us be seated. I believe the wall of Jericho in our lives has been pulled down. Amen. Do you believe that? The amen sounds as if you don't believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to take much of your time. Can somebody read the text that was read for us this morning? Just the first two verses there. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Just go verse 1 and 2. Cast your bread upon the waters, for after many days you will find it again. Okay. Give portions to the seven, yes to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Thank you. God bless you, man. Let's look at what was read now. Let's look at it in a literary form. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Is it possible? Hallelujah. So when, when they were singing now, there was a song. Unquestionable, you are the Lord. Unquestionable, you are the Lord. Unquestionable, unquestionable unquestionable you are the lord See, the word of god says in the book of isaiah it says my ways are not your ways my thoughts are not your thoughts as the heaven is far from the earth so who can measure the distance between the heaven and the earth it's immeasurable so let's let's try and break that down cast thy bread upon the waters for thou shalt find it after many days this is my own interpretation of what was what said there. Do good. When you do good to somebody, that person might not reciprocate that goodness. We're going to find it somewhere else. Hallelujah. 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 Am I making sense? Hallelujah. Because when I when I look at it, just a stream, a flowing stream, then you put your bread in peace and you throw it there. Say, okay, you're going to you're going to recover it. It sounds so absurd. But the ways of God are mysterious. Let's, let's look at ourselves. Do we trust in God? Do we believe in God? I, I know we believe in God. Because if you don't believe in God, you'll not be here this morning. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know that which you've been asking God for a very long time. And he hasn't answered you. But i got news for you this morning. God never fails. Is always on time. See that timing. That's that's why we have we, we, we come into difficulties. Oh God, I want this. God, I want that. God, I want, when are you going to answer me? But he's a calculating God. When you look at the story of um Abraham, 
his wife Sarah was like 90 or something years old. And the angel of God came to, came to her and said she was going to have a baby. Let's, let's look at it in this um, day and age. Is it possible for a 90 year old woman to have a baby? So when they gave her that message, she, started, she was thinking her that, oh, what's this man saying? But my God is always on time. Our God is a covenant keeping God. If you believe in God, before the end of this year, like how many more days, God will still work a miracle in our life. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Amen. God bless everyone, every one of us. Amen. Just believe in God. Do good. The greatest commandment in the Bible, love God, that's the first one. The one that is more like it, as Jesus told us, love thy neighbor as yourself. Let's look into our hearts. Do we love our neighbor as ourselves? We're all going to say yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Let's look into this. The, the year is going to an end. Let's do a self appraisal of ourselves. Am I? Do I love my neighbor as myself, or am I being selfish? Some of us, when they ask us, we're going to say, "Oh, because I did this for this person, the way he respected the gesture was bad, so I'm not going to do it again." God doesn't work that way. When I was younger, there was one old one of my teachers. He told me, he said, there's nothing you do in life that you don't get the reward. You can't expect to sow um, apple, then you're expecting to reap um, carrots. It's not possible. There's something we, in, in computer we call it giggle. Garbage in, garbage out. What you put in the system, that is what you're going to get. So, as from today, let's start doing good. I know we're, going, we're all going to say we do good, we do good, we do good. But let's look into our hearts. Because God is a rewarder. There's nothing you do. People might not appreciate you, but my Father in heaven appreciates you. Let's look at verse 2. Give a portion to seven and also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. When I say do good, some of us, is, it looks so weird. Is it possible? Um, I have just this um, $20 in my pocket. And this man came to me saying, oh, brother, can I have $5? I, I got to eat. Um, I need breakfast. And looking at yourself, I have to feed my kids. If I give him this dollar, mm -mm, mm -mm. sorry, I don't have no money. And God sees you. Actually, you know you have money. See, what, what I'm saying is, if you're worshipping God, you've got to have faith. Your faith has to be strong. That is called worshipping God. Believing God. A lot of us here, we, ha we have dreams. Good dreams. And they are not manifesting. Then we, we start asking ourselves, why are my, my good dreams not manifesting? Some of us will pray. Some of us, mm, maybe it's just my, my inner conscience or my inner self um, showing me stuff. We don't believe. But I tell you one thing. This world is more spiritual than physical. What you can't see is more than what you see. Hallelujah. Yeah. Everything starts from the spiritual realm. Let me give you an example. Maybe you sleep and you had a dream that um, there was fire in a house. Probably in the house that you're living in. Then you wake up. So that was, that was a nightmare. God is showing you what's about to happen. If you don't pray very well, that fire is going to happen. But if you pray, it's going to change the course of that fire. So a lot of us, God talks to us, but we don't understand what he's, what he's saying because we are not close to God. If I ask everybody here this morning, who, who read the Bible this morning? When you woke up in the morning? Who went through the Bible this morning? But who, who went through their phones this morning? Everybody went through their phones. You see, I, I'm, I, I'm going to tell you something. Technology is taking us far from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's occupying most of our time. We don't have time for God no more. And God is watching. And that is what the devil is trying to do. When you wake up this morning, who prayed to God this morning? Okay, a few of us. It's so funny. Me, myself, 
I myself talking. When I wake up the first day, I just grab my phone. Like I'm going to get a million dollars on the phone. Hallelujah. I'm not saying don't, don't love technology. Don't get me wrong. But give time for God. When you're driving on the road, like you drive, you drive on the road every day, who's keeping you safe? Is it your, because you're an experienced driver? So who's keeping you? It's God. The, the car is, is, uh, is an, uh, is, um, uh, what do you call it? It's a contraption. Anything can happen to the car on the road. The tire can bust. The engine can stop working. But what is God? Uh, so we need to appreciate God more. Give him all the glory. Give him all the adoration. So that he can do wonders in our lives. Hallelujah. Look at verse 3. If the clouds were full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall towards the south or towards the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Look at, look at scientists or climatologists or meteorologists. They predict the weather. I would say probably 90% they get it right. So what happened to the 10%? God is always dead on time. Predictability. People can, you know, they can look at things and say, okay, they can postulate theories. That, or if the conditions are this or this and this, this is the result we get. But with God, it surpasses all human comprehension. I've seen somebody who, who said he, uh, he, has, he has an headache. Oh, my head is aching, and he went to church, and the shepherd was about to pray. He said, okay. As he closed his eyes, I said, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Michael. The Spirit of God was missing onto the, uh, the shepherd that, okay, the headache starts from something on the person's leg. And said, okay, bring out your, your right leg. And the man was still, up here, you are saying my leg. Okay, bring your right leg, go and get egg and whatever material they're going to use. And they prayed, and they rubbed it on the leg. And the headache disappeared. That is God. He's spiritual. And we are, you know, we are all spiritual beings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are all what? Spiritual. God said I created man in my own image. So what's the image of God? Hallelujah. <laughs> that image of God in us is the breath of life that God breathed into us. Breathed into us. For no stress. I'm talking now. Do I have a bank where this word is coming out from? I don't even know what I'm saying. It's the words are just coming out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is the image of God in us. So if God has created us as a carbon copy of himself, that means we are God too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are what? We are mini gods. Because we have part of God in us. So most of us, when we are praying to God, we cringe. We are not being assertive enough. Hallelujah. You're asking something from God and you're saying, oh God, if, if you can just give me a small car. If you can just give me a small house. When God can give you a mansion, he can give you a, a whole estate. We, ha we have to get to the, to, the, to the point of being assertive enough. To the point of being able to command. Hallelujah. Yeah. Am I making sense? So most of us, is as our, answer, our prayers are not answered. Because we're not putting ourselves in that position as gods. Hallelujah. I'm not saying equate yourself with God Almighty. But we are many gods. And what are gods? They are kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we kings? Yes. See, you can't even answer me very well. Are we kings? Yes. Who is a king here? Who is a queen? Who is a princess? Hallelujah. We are kings because God has destined us to be kings. And kings have what? They, have, they got power. They have kingdoms. That they, do, they dominate. Are we dominating? We are not dominating. Because we've not brought ourselves to that reign. Of being kings. Of being assertive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to ginger you this morning. To understand the, the, the position that God has placed you guys in. Most of us we find ourselves in situations. Because we allow it to happen. But we are not being assertive enough. We are not praying enough. We are not believing enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
if you are a king, things will happen. You just you command. Are we commanding? We are cringing. If 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 only if we are we are allowing situations around us to 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 drain us. We are allowing situations around us to drown us. Hallelujah. Somebody was telling me, oh, the laws in America are different. And I said, listen, which one is much more better? Which one, which one is much more powerful? The laws of this country or the laws of God? Because who, who, who reigns over everybody? God. Even when you look at the constitution of all countries, they were taken from this Bible. I always say this is the manual of life. This is the book of life. If you want to be close to God, you have to read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation and understand what it is saying. There's no situation that you are passing through that is not written, it's not recorded in this book. Hallelujah. So most of us are running elter skelter. We are going to places you are not supposed to go to, looking for solution. Whereas the solution is right there with you because you are, you are made in the image of God, like king. You need to command. You need to say, this is what I want. And you believe it. Most of us are saying, we, we, we're saying, this is what we want. But we are not believing it. We are doubting. There's this song in Celestial Song. I'm not, I'm not a choir, but I think the choir can help me. I want only, yeah, Meji. Can you just read for uh, non Yoruba speakers here to understand? Just a f- they will end up in empty. If you're asking anything from God, don't be doubtful. Because the moment you're doubting, it's not going to happen. When Jesus was walking on top of the water, one of his disciples said, oh, I want to do the same thing you're doing. He said, okay, come along. And he was actually walking on that water. But the moment he got scared, what happened? He started sinking. So most of us, our faith is fickle. It's not so strong. I, I, I'm going to tell you one thing. I so believe in God that if anybody brings a gun and says he's going to shoot me, I tell him, go ahead. Because I know my God will not allow it to happen. But the moment you, 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 you doubt, it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second lesson. I said I'm not going to take much because the shepherd's got big business with us this morning. Second lesson. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24. Just read verse 24 to 26. Jesus told them another parable. Sorry, excuse me, sir. Can a lady read? Please, please. Jesus told them another parable. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Hmm. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed wheat among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed head, then the wheat also appeared. The honored servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did this wheat came, come from? 28. An enemy did this, he replied. The servant asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? Thank you, man. God bless you. Hallelujah. Like I said, God talks to us in parables. <clears throat> but we need... God's understanding to be able to decode these parables. Look at, look, let's look at what he said there. The kingdom of heaven is like, likened unto a man who sowed good seed in his field. But, but while men slept, his enemy came. So, most of us, when we're doing things, there's no consistency. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Consistency. When you look at most of our minds now, you want to be, uh, you, you want to be, uh, a designer today, tomorrow you want to sell, you want to sell clothes. Day after tomorrow you want to do this. So you, just, you want to confuse God? Hallelujah. 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 You need what? Consistency with God. But we're not consistent. Because you're asking for something today and it's not like you, you start a business today and it's not working out. You lose hope. Nobody says because you're going to start a business, everything's going to come easily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not going to come easily. You're going to find some hard times. But your consistency with God will see you through. I know some of us have business, we are business minded here. 
And you're waiting, waiting for that time, that, that big money is going to come. Then you keep dreaming about numbers. You want to go play Lodo. Hallelujah. 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 There's this saying, they say, oh, you use the money to make money, right? I don't believe that. I don't subscribe to that. You use your hair to make money. A lot of us, we are, we are trapped. And that belief that, oh, you need, you need a million dollars to do this. No, what you need is this. Your hair. God has given it to us. Let, 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 us, let us use it. We are kings. We are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are authorities. Let us use that power that God has given us to make things happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he's saying, he's saying in this book that um, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat. You have a house. You're trying to protect your house. You have a, a, a CCTV camera that is mounted. You have a monitor in the, in the house that you watch regularly. So by just um, putting the camera up, that doesn't give you security. But your monitoring of that monitor in the house tells you what is going on around you. If you see any, any bad, ugly situation, you call the cops. But if you're not watching, not monitoring that monitor in the house, people can come in and take charge of your house. That's, that's what I'm talking about, consistency. Monitoring. But if you don't monitor what you're doing, the enemies can come and mess it up. So while we're praying, you don't say, okay, God, I want you to do something for me. You pray today. You pray probably for three days. After three days, you, you're tired. You don't want to pray no more. Some of us, when we, when we wake up in the morning, to get up and just go on our knees to pray to God is a problem. You start praying on the bed. The next thing you hear after to me is snoring. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Consistency. Monitoring. Whatever you're doing. Because um, the devil is out there. The devil is a spirit. Can go anywhere. And have you ever had any pastor saying, oh, I killed the devil today? So God didn't give nobody to, to, to the power to kill the devil. We can only bound the devil. The devil will what? It will unbound itself. So if you are not consistent in your prayer, just give giving, giving opportunity to the devil to come again. Hallelujah. So, you know, why I'm saying this is because the year is going to an end. And some few days or a few weeks, we're going to enter into the new year. So, better start thinking in your mind right now. This new 2022, am I going to be consistent? Am I going to monitor my, my, my behavior, my actions? Am I going to put myself in that position that God has created me to be as a king? Am I going to be a, a, a godlike person? Am I going to do good? People are dying. We all slept yesterday. It's not everybody that slept yesterday woke up this morning. Some died. Is it because we are better than them? But just because of the grace of God in our lives. And when God is still keeping us alive, that means we still got something to do on this earth. Like I, tell, I told you here, I me, mean, I want to buy a private jet. I know you're going to laugh. I know my God is able to do more abundantly than that for me. I don't know about you. Who wants a private jet here? Uh, you see, you're all scared. Oh my God. <laughs> Ask God for those impossible things. It's God because he, he will do impossible things. So you want, you want that jalopy? That's what you want? Okay. Ask for something that it is impossible to do. Then believe and see whether it's going to do it or not. Soon we are going to go into the new year. What's your new resol resolution? We, all, we always have new res resolutions. After two months, we forgot about the resolution. We're back to our whole self. You better be careful this, this new year. Because this new year is full of blessings. I'm not praying, I'm telling you. And the blessings is there. If you want to get it, if you don't want to, it's left for you. Uh, they say in Nigeria, grab your copy. Holy shot. Grab your copy. Fast, fast. Grab, okay, grab your copy now. 2022 is, is, is fully laden with blessings. 
And I'm, I'm going to tell you one thing. Where there's blessings, there's the other thing there too. So it depends on how you want to, what you want from there. And I believe we all want good things to happen in our lives for next year. Yes. See, I, I, because where I'm, where I'm standing right now, this is a place of authority. God said in his words that I, I elevate my words more than my name. So I'm talking about the word of God. I don't know what you want, but I'm prophesying right now. That before the middle of next year, we shall all give great testimonies in this church. Yeah. As individuals, yeah. as families. Yeah. I don't know about you, but if you believe, God will do it. Yeah. See, it's a clause. If you believe, do you believe? Yeah. Do I believe? Yeah. No, I will answer that. Do I believe? Yes. <laughs> if you believe, you will see the glory of God. They, they have to beg us to come to church. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't feel like going to church today. Really? The oxygen you breathe, who gives it to you? How much do you pay for that oxygen? Go to the hospitals. See people who are sick. They have to pay for for uh, oxygen. To, to even to even give it to them, they have to put some mask and whatever. And you are doing yours freely. And to come and worship God is a problem. I don't, I don't, I don't like the shepherd's face. Eh? I don't, I don't, I don't like the church. It's too far. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means you don't like God. Why, why were we created on earth? For one purpose. To worship God. If, um, you are giving a glimpse of what happens in heaven. Just a, a, sim, a small glimpse. What do the angels do over there? They worship God day and night. And Celestial Church so is a peculiar church. If you are shown what goes on in heaven, you hear bells jingling. Bang down. And you see the angels bound down their heads every second, every minute, every hour. But so if you don't practice makes perfect. And you are not practicing it. So when you get there, what are you going to do? Hallelujah. What are you going to do when you get there? You're not used to worshipping God. I always used to, you know, going outside and enjoying yourself. But I got news for you. Time. The time is short. When the owner of the light comes and switches off the light, what are you going to tell him? That, well, I, because I had to go to my, uh, my family's house. That's why I, didn't, I couldn't make it to church. I had to go to a family meeting. That's why I couldn't make it to church. How many hours are you going to spend in church? For God's sake. Probably at max. We don't waste time in this church. Probably three hours or four. We are done. But you can, be, you can sit down on your phone for five hours. Doing what? Gossiping. Gossiping. On Facebook, on TikTok, on whatever. I'm, listen, I'm not saying those things are bad. But give God his time. Give God its time. See, God has given the scientists all this kind of brains. Have you ever seen any, any scientists or whatever say they can manufacture blood? Huh? Do you have people in the medical profession here? Eh? We always transfuse blood. We don't. Nobody has that. And blood is life. Blood is what? Life. I don't want to bore you with my analogy. I don't want to bore you because the shepherd is still coming in to take control. <laughs> God will bless you all. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 